everybody. Welcome to another episode of Just Say with Justin Martindale. Uh, we have got a wonderful year-end review episode for you this week, and I am very excited because I have a very fantastic guest. He is the co-host of Andy Cohen Live on Sirius XM. We also went to the same high school back in Texas like five years ago. Uh, if, if you, that. From Broadway to... Uh, I mean, you were just on Watch What Happens Live a couple days ago. Uh, it's John Hill, everybody. Hi, Justin. Oh, my gosh. It's happening. I hear a standing ovation. Yeah, it's I, really loud. Yeah, yeah, we don't even have headset thank on. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, how are you? I'm great. Great. I'm excited for the year to be over. Yeah. <laughs> that concludes this week's episode, guys. Thank you so much. Like and subscribe. No, um, honestly, you had me on your year-end review last year when I was in... I think it was in San Francisco. Yes, I was in San Francisco. Back in the, uh, still doing the Zoom shows from home. Yeah, it was a Zoom growth. Dark. Ew. Dark. Can we, we did that for two hours. Is this yeah. going to be two hours? It, it was a wrap. It was a, it was a full on like two hours. Thank Who was it? Me and you and Michelle Collins? Was it Michelle or was it Julia Cunningham? Oh, I think it was Julia Cunningham. Same. I did Michelle Collins' show too. I can't but. tell women apart. <laughs> <laughs> now, what did you think of this year so far? As far as pop culture goes, um, highs and lows, like every year, lots of roses, lots of thorns, I suppose. Yeah, it wasn't like, I mean, like going through this list, I was kind of like, okay. I think we're, All right. this might be, the, yeah, the, the last year that's not um, just apocalypse bad. It wasn't apocalyptic bad, right. But it's I, about to be. Why? I think. I can only get worse from <laughs> here. Just, is there a feeling in the wind? Yeah. You think something's going to go down? Yeah, I think things are, we're not headed to a great place. I feel like, you know, we're just a godless society. <laughs> I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why we're a godless society. Because social media. The worst. I think it's the worst. I think, here's what I think is going to happen. I think there's going to be like a break. Uh -huh. I think some people are going to be like, you know what? Enough. I'm done. It's too much. Mm -hmm. I am now in this point now where I go to like reels on Instagram that are suggested to me and it is full mental health problems. We've talked about this before. We uh, have? It, yeah, I think we talked about it on my show where it's for me, well, mental health meaning it shows that I have bad mental health. No, no, no. It's like what they think. <laughs> it's it's like what they think you want to see, but also the minute you see it, you you get thrown into the 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 gauntlet of it. And mine is a lot of gentlemen at the gym. Gentlemen. Pulling on pants uh -huh. and pulling them back off. Same. We have the same algorithm. Yeah, we do. Who knew? I think it's kind of healthy. It's either that or chihuahuas in baskets. What's the difference? It's all the same to me. <laughs> Julia <and> Michelle. <laughs> it is very strange, though, because I get the same thing. It'll, it'll just be like someone with like this enormous dong in their sweatpants. <laughs> and I'm just like, it is like, I'm having coffee in the morning. Like, and they're, and, and it's not even like content. It'll just be like someone just being like, <laughs> and I'm like, okay, get and out of here. They're making so much money. Doing so much that. money. So I'm looking at this while I'm poor counting my debt. And I'm looking at this probably 25 year old straight guy sure. in Ohio showing an elephantitis dong yeah. for 500 grand a month. Oh yeah. And I'm at this point now where I'm watching the evolution of it happen yeah. where there's this one guy who like during the pandemic would like sing with his cat. Now he just, I know the guy you do. He wears a Santa hat sometimes and the cat scratches him yes. like, mid, mid song. Yes. He does it all the time. Now he's, he's so like a full hot. on porn star now. I know. Thank God. I mean, <laughs> thank God. Oh, you like it? No, I don't. Oh. But it, <laughs> of course not. Yeah. No, God, gross. Filth. Hmm. <laughs> You're right. Godless. Put yeah. God back into Christmas. But it is weird because I'm just like, oh, this guy used to sing with like his cat and this cat would attack him. And now it's just like I like I clicked on something and he's like getting like. Sure. In the shower. Yeah. By a friend. I'm like, good for you. It's the bad baby effect. When yeah. she crossed the $50 million threshold. You're and started, right. Started doing uh, speeches at Oxford about how to be an entrepreneur. Cash that outside. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of people, I think we, yeah, we, we took God out of Christmas. <laughs> we need God back in Christmas, y'all. Sure do. We need to pray for this uh -huh. country. I mean, it is a lot. So with that being said, I, I think- I know a lady who's in a nursing home who, th she's like 80 and has dementia, and she believes she's in a relationship with a gay, muscly 
influencer. And when I saw that type of shit started ha starting to happen, I realized like I need to check myself because I would. I mean, I literally would do that right now. I'm in love with the guy who, you know, sings to his cat. I mean, like I would believe the fantasy, and I feel like we have to like get back to reality. A yeah, bit. but also that's kind of goals. Like I want to be an 80 year old woman with dementia, thinking like. <laughs> That's the good version of me at 80. <laughs> but I do think that is weird because I feel like people start building a relationship with these people thinking that like, because it is in a way it's catfishing. It's also like, you know, I, 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 I've I had several people. I had my first like fake account made. Oh, like, really? So, okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Like someone. You made it. I did. I was like, Justin Martindale's 1975. And I was just like, how rude. That's not it. But um, I made that account. It was weird. And they were, it was funny because I had friends texting me. And they're like, the way it starts off is just like, hello, rosebud emoji. And I'm like, rosebud emoji. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's. But also to a woman. Right. And they're like, nope, this is scam. And it's like, no, how are you and your family doing? Mm -hmm. Very weird. Mm -hmm. And then I had a friend have it happen. It's happening. Be careful on social media. Okay. Be careful. Let's get into it. <laughs> um, now, I know you from San Antonio, Texas. We went to the same high school. Last Both year. were theater. Uh, last year. Yeah. And you went off to be a big Broadway baby. That's right. In Hairspray. A big baby in yeah. general. You yeah. were, who did you play? You played Link in Hairspray? I was a Link understudy. I played yeah. the original Fender, which was a pivotal, pivotal, a pivotal role. role. Yes. Yeah. He's a bad dancer and has glasses. I mean, typecast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then went on to play, um, uh, you were in a musical called Bear, which I lost my shit over. Did you really? I did. Well, before that, I was Hugh Jackman's understudy in The Boy From Us. Let's just get all the credits oh, out. Oh, yeah, get them all correctly. in. Because um, that was a shit show. And yeah. I was a 26-year-old playing a 50-year-old man married to Judy Garland. Same. I had a breakdown. <laughs> I started antidepressants that year. Did you really? Yeah, it was, it was awful. What? Uh, because it was just like it messed with your head? Uh, it, I, it was just a lot. I love Hugh Jackman, though. So nice. Yeah. So great. But was it because you were 26 playing a 50-year-old man and you were yeah. just like, wait, what am I, what am I doing? And like Hairspray had been such an amazing experience. And so was Boy From Oz. It was just different, you yeah. know? And people were really like, I was like, how is this not Hamburger Marys? It's Judy Garland, Liza Minnelli, but you're taking it seriously. They're like, we got to get into character. I'm like, you're in a, you're a clown, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad you saw Bear. You know, we were open for like two months only. It's so wild because I remembered like doing... Um, what was I doing? I was doing the Lake Tahoe Shakespeare Festival, humble oh, brag. Yes, one of one of my, my favorite, favorite moments of my life. Um, and there was a, the stage manager was like, "Oh my God, there's this musical called Bear," and it was with Michael Arden, who I knew, Texas guy. Yeah, and he also went to Juilliard with my friend Jessica Collins, right, who is now Texas. on that show with Patrick John, Echo Three, I believe it's called on Amazon. Sure. <laughs> John's sure. Like, yes. I mean, I, that SEAL Team Six, they're all the same. Uh, so it's a yeah. weird thing. And I was like, I was like, oh, okay. So then we listened to it, and it's, you know, about bullying in high school and like this. We were ahead of the bullying. Curve. You really were. Yeah. It really was. And it was so well done. And I remember being like, oh my God, that's John Hill. Like, you played like the straight jock. Yeah, who and then I committed suicide on stage, uh, overdosing on GHB, which was also I had ahead of its time. time. <laughs> <laughs> it really was. The gays were like, "Oh, okay, Good trust." Yeah. So I mean, and then you went on to dating Andy Cohen for a while, right? Another big resume moment for me. Yeah. Yeah. For how long was that? Three years. Uh -huh. We met in Hairspray. We were boyfriends all through those times, during Bear and everything. And you're still friends with them now? We co-host a morning show. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. huh? That's yeah. weird. And I worked to Watch What Happens Live for many years. And then I was a TV producer at Bravo for my 30s. So you're like Mr. Bravo, pretty much. The poor Mr. Bravo. He, the, I guess he would be the rich, successful one. I would be the poor one. You're the Krampus of Bravo. Thank you. You are, yeah, mm -hmm. there's Andy Cohen and then there's Andy Cohen's shadow. <laughs> yeah. It's okay, you know. Krampus is kind of snatched. <laughs> Krampus is it. I'm sorry. Like, I'm telling you, like, I had yeah. so many people reach out and be like, oh my God, I watched Krampus this year. It's everything. And I had Allison Tolman on last week. I saw that. Yeah. Um, Krampus is hot. Yeah. Like, who would you want to get with? Krampus or Santa? Krampus. You have to say I think that because so. I'm here. Yeah, it's, it's a hot <laughs> nightmare. Yeah, I mean, you know what you're getting into. Yeah. You're like, okay, he's got hooves. Come on, let's get this yeah. over with. Okay. See, All right. Well, that being said, let's get into some <laughs> moments 
that defined 2022. Mm. Let's start with, remember like like a couple years ago, it was like January, the insurrection. I think I did that one <laughs> with you. And it was like, remember that? <laughs> Tale as old as time. <sighs> Wow. Um, did you watch Beauty and the Beast, uh, the 30th anniversary? Oh, my anniversary? God. That's what I haven't done. Shania Twain is Mrs. Potts. Shania Twain oh, is Mrs. Potts. You know what? I turned Potts. it on, and then I switched to the Miss Cleo documentary. Oh, my God. Time. I have to get in that. Is it good? Uh, yes, but also goals. Like, who... Th- that's just what... Why did I go to all this trouble to, like, work when I could just be Miss Cleo? Like, who, I want to just give people advice on, uh, you know... Oh, yeah. We had a we had She's a fortune amazing. teller on uh, telling us, like, what we're supposed to look forward to in 2023. And he was like, oh, Madonna's going to go through heartbreak. I'm like, uh, uh, <laughs> OK, go uh, on. Okay. Oh, the economy is going to suck. Okay. OK. And some people are like, here's my money. Take it. Right. Tell me everything. It's good. But what how is Martin Short as Lumiere? I mean, it's Martin Short as Lumiere. How and, like, is it? Is it? I was thinking it was going to be one of those live experiences, but it's more like a tribute movie okay it's a whole tribute like th- th- there was um josh groban is the beast i love josh i groban. love josh groban i am sorry josh groban can get it absolutely josh groban is i need him in more things sweeney todd i need him in all of it mm-hmm. he is my ben platt thank you yeah and i stand by it as some as a as a young performer who got his start on ally mcbeal He is just the voice of an angel. My God. And a cool person. And just, and funny. Yeah. And he was like in this weird beast costume, which made no sense, but he did the damn thing. And her was amazing as Belle. And they had the original Belle play the librarian that she goes to in the beginning. And they had some drawings and renderings. And then Gaston Shania, was good. Huh? Shania Twain. And then Shania Twain. And I asked someone, I said, why, why? Why was Shania Twain Mrs. Potts? And they were like, Middle America. Right. And I was like, right. Well, but she's a gay icon as well. Sort of. Oh. She's not Angela Lansbury. Well, Angela Lansbury's dead. To you, maybe. <laughs> 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 I know, but she did a nice tribute to it, but it was just kind she of also, like... Well, I'll say it. This is rude. Shania Twain can't sing. Sorry. You said it. That don't impress me much. So what? You're a country singer. Good for you. I mean, it's always been a, a thing. I mean, she has great spirit. <laughs> she has a lot of energy. But she she has bad fashion and she can't sing. But that's not mean. That's just true. <laughs> Anything she, else? She Anything? always has. She's so pretty. <laughs> she did show me the People's Choice Awards and that like leopard thing. She does thing have with... menopause. <laughs> she has menopause. Yeah. So she, what? I say that just because she just said, I have menopause. And that's why she did a naked photo shoot. But carry on. Yeah. So what? You got menopause. <laughs> that don't impress me much. <laughs> Yeah, it was weird, but overall, I give it like there was a really sick moment where like her came out as like Belle and like had the guitar and was oh, rocking it out. Okay. Yeah. And was like, Taylor's all this time. And I'm like, yes. Oh, I need to watch it. Yeah. And then it made me fat, sad about Celine Dion because they showed the video of Celine oh my Dion. God. My God, stiff person syndrome. Stiff what is it? Persons. What is it? I spent a lot. Here's the thing it doesn't matter how fucking healthy you eat. How much sleep you get, how much water you drink, bitch. You're going to get something. You're going to get something. They're going to make something up. <laughs> when oh. You're at the peak of your life. They're going to be like, hey, Justin, you're going to get, you know, rotten foot disease. <laughs> rotten foot disease. I'm like, well, guys, I have to sell you all something. I have rotten foot disease. <laughs> And then they're going to be like, I, and I can't do stand up anymore because it's, I have so to you just hobble. Sit down. Yeah. <laughs> God, that was so heartbreaking. It's so sad. It was so sad. I mean, that was like our end of the year. It was like, happy anniversary, Titanic, stiff person syndrome. Oh, <gasps> God. She's I like, I can't you. sing. Oh, okay. Is, is that true? She can't sing now? Well, or it's, it's affecting like, her voice. It's like her vocal cords. Yeah. They're stiff. Just stiff vocal cords. Fuck. I know. Cut it out. Anyways, yeah. all right. Let's start with the slap heard around the world. Got him. Will Smith slaps Chris Rock at the Oscars. Now, this was a story that I remember being on stage at the improv. I think I was in like Irvine or, or or Oxnard or something like that. And we were doing a Juicy Scoop live. And I went backstage and Spencer Pratt, weirdly enough, was just like, holy shit, Will Smith just slapped the shit out of Chris Rock. And we were like, what? And we got on Twitter and sure enough, we saw this. And it was very shocking 
we had to tell everyone in the audience, like, please don't like look at your phones right now. We're doing this. We will talk did about it. Did they obey that? I mean, they, they did. Yeah. Okay. Cause I mean, it was like breaking news. So, I mean, it was like, you got the updates, you yeah. know? Well, Smith slaps Chris Rock and you're like, what? How? I and was it a joke? Right. I remember I was watching, I was bored and then yeah. I decided to, um, watch like, the Oscars. <laughs> literally. No, <laughs> I was in Florida. Uh huh. So things were already kind of bleak and I was, I decided you're going to laugh. I decided to write in my journal before bed. I was like going to sleep. I was like, I'm going to write. My, and I got a text right as I, so I didn't see it live. Yeah. I, someone was like, did you see that? It was Andy actually. Uh huh. And I rewound it or whatever you do with the DVR. I still don't get it. I, I don't it's either. It's like still baffling. It, it's like a, that was fucked up. It really was fucked up because. Have you ever it, slapped anyone? Like truly, like open handed, just like. No. Went for Have it. Have you? Yes. No. That, that was a long pause. No, but I hit a guy uh, with a tennis racket at in middle school. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, it was okay. <laughs> But an open hand slap, like, I think of open hand slap. In public. Yeah, in public, on television, like, yeah. in front of everyone. And, I mean, to this day, it was like, you're making fun of my wife. There's, like, beef from the past. Like, I think I think Jada Pinkett is just trash. You do? I do. I'm like, she's like, oh, you're making fun of my alopecia. Girl, like, relax. Also... Uh, I have I have a friend from college who has alopecia, and it was like, if you don't have a sense of humor about it, and also, like, are you kidding me? So you're going to go out of your way to get up out of your seat, storm the stage, and physically assault someone? The Oscars has dropped in ratings. Yeah. And that's like 9 million or something. It used to be like 48 million or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, that's still... 10 million people who are watching you, and you know it. You're also up for an Oscar that year, mm -hmm. and then you end up winning it. And you end up later. winning. I... I have a hard time putting it was myself gross. in the mindset. Are they Scientologists? We don't know. Are you? <laughs> no. No, I could never. Okay. I don't I don't, I don't You never know in this town. It's so weird. I don't get it. And like Scientology is just something that just freaks me the fuck out. Because Christy Alley died and like Yeah, she did. And it was just like and like the Scientology Center was just like, well, she no, she didn't die. She just transitioned. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> She's gonna be around for a billion. She didn't go to a hospital and get checked out. No, she that's yeah. what that's what Zanu wants. Sure, Zenu. Uh, whatever. Please pronounce her name correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Their name correctly. The, the being Zenu. This was bullshit. It was bullshit, and here's what I'm I'm tired of talking about it. Okay. So officially, this me too moment is over. I don't care anymore. I don't want to hear about the slap anymore. Chris it's Rock just, for life, though. Chris Rock for life. Obsessed. Chris Rock is killing it right now. Our buddy Rick Ingram is opening for him on tour, and Love. he is everything. Love Chris Rock so and much. And I love that he was like, I don't want to talk about this on stage. Right. And he will eventually. But it was just like, I think Will Smith is just like, get out of here. Officially. Yeah, and I don't want to hear... Um Will Will Smith be able to sell a movie anymore? I'm cool without seeing any more Will Smith movies, I think. I think I'm good. Yeah, I was good after getting jiggy with it. I was good after I Am Legend, which is a pretty good movie. It was okay. Okay. And I was officially done after <laughs> Miami. What was Miami? Party in the city where oh. the heat is on. All night on the beach till the oh, break of dawn. Oh, Venidos on Miami. Yeah. Right. We don't live in Miami. Okay. <laughs> I pronounce it Miami. We don't live in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's another moment of 2022. This couple that exhausted everyone, Jennifer Lopez, who hates Virgos, um, got married again to Ben Affleck and um, narcissists collide. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just kind of like, who cares? Like, what do you think? Do you think they're going to last? Maybe. Mm hmm. Uh, I think they're made for each other. This they're both like narcissists. Same whores. But I say that celebrating them. Yeah. They found their birds of a feather, birds of a narcissistic feather flocking together. Did, yeah. I think they enjoy their each other's company. I hope. Well, I mean, of course, because I feel like they're the only two that can like. Yeah. Like what's it? What's it called? Tolerate each other. Exactly. <laughs> did you see the video of, okay, it kind of went, went a little viral on TikTok where they did like the Vogue questions with her. Yes. And it was just like, shut up. They're like, in a biopic, who would you like to play you? She hasn't been born yet. Right. Okay. <laughs> Those things are so curated. I only like the parodies. 
<laughs> the parodies aren't good. I don't believe them for a second. It's, they're they're very cringe. It's even like the Adele one, which I feel like she kind of tried to be natural, but I I can't. I mean, but then they were like, uh, "You're stuck in a desert island. What would you eat forever?" And she's like, "Rice and chicken and beans." <laughs> and I'm like, uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Um, yeah, I mean, I worry for her. Actually, I think that he's trying his best, but you know, I am a um, the other Jen Stan, Jennifer Gardner. Yeah, of course. And I feel like she's when you see someone being like that supportive and like I'm rooting for you means like. She's really hoping someone succeeds who has a hard time. No, I, I oh. think because she said like, I you know when she was talking about him when they divorced, she's like, when you're with him and he loves you, it's like the sun is shining on you. And when he's in a bad spot, there's literally it's hell on earth. So I just hope that, you know, he and I keeps also think it tight and right. With I Jen. think what kind of like messed it up for Jen Lopez is that halftime show that no one asked for. <laughs> No one asked for this. And no she one ever asked for the halftime show though. I know it's like whatever. Yeah. But I don't it's um I like the Beyonce one ten years ago whenever for sure. it was. But All I of them were great. Stop caring. And then although I stand for the Shakira, J Lo, you know, like people like Megan Kelly saying, like, how dare they shake their vag in front of my children at home? I say shake the vages. Shake your vag, ladies. Go for it. What else is anyone doing if you're not shaking your vag? It's the only reason I'm gonna tune into a television. If show. you're if you're a pop star on the biggest platform on the world for that day. And you have a vag. And you have a vag. <laughs> shake it, girl. Shake Go. it. Go. No one wants to see Justin Timberlake. No one wants to see Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars. What the weekend. See? Get out of here. Oh, that was so bad. What was the other one that was like trash? Maroon 5? Ma well, I mean. Oh, no. Give us no. Rihanna. And everyone's like, oh, is she going to do a makeup tutorial? I hope Fine. so. Give me a Fenty Beauty makeup tutorial at the Super Bowl. With someone shaking a vag? God, please. Then my I will face. I'll tune into it. Shake your vag. Like, give it to us, please. Yeah, so I do I, I, I do appreciate that she at least shaked, shook her vag. Shaked her vag? Shook. Shook her vag. Shook her vag. <laughs> but also, it was also, you got that moment of her being like, I thought I was going to be nominated for an Oscar for oh. my portrayal in Hustlers. We're like, shut up. Did you yeah. see your movie? It wasn't that great. Yeah. Your ass looked great. <laughs> you looked fine. But I mean, it wasn't like, oh, my God, you weren't giving us like, we weren't getting like, you know, on Golden Pond. We're not getting. You know, Judy <laughs> Dench. Yeah. 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 Gonna, your ass didn't open up and start speaking like the Queen of England. I guarantee if Helen Mirren had a bit part in that, she would have been nominated for Boom. it. Yeah. Get out of here. Okay. Speaking of get out of here. Olivia Wilde, uh, there was a moment, we have this whole Don't Worry Darling drama that lasted forever. I think it was longer than the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial in itself. Olivia Wilde was served on stage at Comic-Con, I'm sorry, CinemaCon in Las Vegas, uh, labeled personal and confidential by uh, custody papers from her ex-husband, Jason Sudeikis. Um, I love this. I do too. Yeah. Serve it. Serve it. Serve it up hot. <laughs> Yeah, he and, and she went on to say that he did this on purpose to embarrass her. Yeah, okay. you think? Um, wow. He chose to serve me in the most aggressive manner possible. Now, this happened before the drama of Harry Styles and Don't Worry Darling. Did you watch Don't Worry Darling? I watched half of it. I haven't even seen it because I don't care. I wanted to. I love Florence Pugh. I do too. Obsessed. I love the Pew, but this was... And I liked Booksmart, which was Olivia's. She directed that as well. Booksmart was funny. It was great. So great. So I, I came into this liking Olivia Wilde. But this was, the, yeah, this was like the, the Harry Styles' first film. It was very like Twilight Zone meets Stepford Wives. We didn't know exactly what was happening. I'm not a huge Harry Styles queen. I'm not either. I Take it or leave it for I don't me. Care. Fine. You know? Yeah, I think One Direction, listenable. <laughs> you don't know you're beautiful. <laughs> oh God. Sure. Yes, I do. <laughs> were they on America's Got Talent or American Idol? They were on He something. was on X Factor. Sure. Yeah. Lovely, pleasant guy. But the drama that ensued. The from drama this that film. ensued, I love that he's like giving a little nod to Bowie and like kind of like gender, like rock and roll fuckery. I love that. But again, I'm like I'm not here for like, I, I didn't ask for Harry Styles, the actor. Be a singer. That's fine. 
And is the is the tea that he's actually really bad at acting? Or yes. So is the is the kernel of the drama that they all showed up for this film, Olivia and Harry start uh making love with each other. Yeah. She's otherwise engaged with Jason Sudeikis. And then Florence Pugh's like, wait, I'm here to work. And like, where are you guys fucking? Well, also they originally cast Shia LaBeouf as Harry Styles. Right. Yes. Mm. And then, she, and then, and then Shia, 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 the voice. Shia that... was just like, you know what? I don't want to do this. And she's like, no, we want you. No. And that was with Florence, I think was the drama between that. And then they were like, well, uh, he said that he, oh, oh, she said that he was fired. And he was like, no, actually, I walked away from it because I'm not going to deal with this. I came to work and you guys are yeah. full on drama, high school. <clears throat> and then it just went on and on and on and on. And to the point where I was just like, no, I don't want to see this movie. And I didn't. And I still haven't. I think it really hurt the film. Did it hurt the film? I think people went to see it because of the drama. Well, uh, Olivia Wilde went on to win a very coveted uh, Razzie? E People's <laughs> Choice Award for it. So, and she got up there and was like, "Thank you all for the support." And I'm like, I did not see this movie at all. So, I can tell you that my theater was packed, but when I woke up from my nap, uh, the other guys in the theater were also sleeping. It was a lot of girlfriends just, uh, yeah, just forcing their people to come to the show. Yeah. I did appreciate the Venice Film Festival drama, though, where they were all, none of them were speaking. And uh. Florence Pugh said, No, I'm not doing press. But then they all had to sit next to each other. And then there was the whole thing with Harry spitting on Chris Pine. Did that happen? No. Yeah. But it, it that wouldn't have been about like it. white dress, brown dress type of like, mm -hmm. I looked at it and was like, I don't see actual spit, but the way it all it looked, it was an like internet trickery. I loved it. And then like, and then like, uh, Olivia was trying to get like Florence Pugh to look at her and Florence Pugh was just like, no. And I do that. You I try to get people's attention. No, I don't try to, I, I get it. But like when, <laughs> when you I ignore. don't want to see somebody or if I know somebody's there that I don't want to see, I will just. I, I, I don't. I won't engage. Is this I, like when I saw you in WeHo like th a month ago at um that Mexican restaurant and like Oh, you mean the famed Mr. Tempo? <laughs> <laughs> Wait. Yes. I, I said hi to you. I said hi to you. You came over to my table. Yeah, I know, because you were ignoring me. I didn't ignore you. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, wait, I did not ignore you. Like, no. Or did I? Uh, no, you, you came me. over to my table with like the old mayor, right? Wasn't he like the old mayor? Adam Shankman? <laughs> that was Adam Shankman? Yes. <laughs> I guess he's the old mayor of, of oh, Hocus Pocus and Enchanted. I, <laughs> I, it was very dark in I there to be honest. I would know a mayor. <laughs> the best is that this whole time he's probably been telling people, yeah, John, John came mayor. up. Yeah, John's hanging out with John, the mayor now. John, Eric John knows our old mayor. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Have you heard? He knows the mayor. <laughs> Not Karen Bass, the old one. Wow. Oh my God. That was, that was, <laughs> like, oh my God. Oh, no. But I, no, you came over to our table, which, yes. are you, have you gone back? No. <laughs> no. No, it was a place. We didn't even go to go there. It was just, we were like, we need something to eat. Oh, here's this new place. It was I guess so we'll walk weird. In. Adam chose it. Oh, all right. Uh, next up for 2022, um, <laughs> Met Gala, whatever. I mean, I mean, the big story of the Met Gala was Kim Kardashian's dress. The themes of the Met Gala are so aggravating. I still get furious. <laughs> so a couple years ago, or the it feels like there's one every month, but the one before this was like the Gilded Age, or, or was this the Gilded this Age? This was Gilded Age. Oh the What's Gilded the Gilded Age? Gilded Age? Oh Gold, my God. Like 1800s? It's the, it's the 10 year bracket. <laughs> right. Thank you. This bullshit. Between... 1890 to 1900. So the taint. It's the taint of the 1800s. <laughs> okay. The taint 1800s. So let's celebrate that with a bunch of bullshit. It's like right before the industrial age. And but what's that? The industrial age is when, <laughs> when um, hello, it's when... Uh, In industry takes place. Like steam and... Yeah, oh, right, locomotive. Trains right. and gears, mm. you know. <laughs> the coal industry. Like Madonna's Express Yourself video. Okay, now I get now it. Now you Thank get you. it, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, and it's also a fantastic series on HBO Max if you have not seen it. I love industry. Or The Gilded Age. Yeah, oh, The Gilded industry. Age is everything. Ugh. And it's coming back for season two. If you haven't watched it over the holidays, please start it. Okay. Kim Kardashian's dress, which she was sewn into or whatever... And then there was the drama of her saying, It was you know, Marilyn Monroe's original Happy Birthday, Mr. President dress. 
This is what infuriates me about the Met Gala. You have a theme. <laughs> a bad one. But a good one, sorry, according to you. Blake Lively turned it out. I'm sorry. Always. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. She had story. She had concept. She had design. She had reveal. Okay. Remember? She was in like that, like, she was like, I was inspired by the architecture of yeah. New York, the Statue of Liberty, and the way it's blue because of the oxidization of the water and all this stuff. She had science. Kim shows up, contacts Ripley's Believe It or Not. <laughs> Hey, I need a dress. <laughs> and then like rips it or whatever. And I just thought, I just thought it was a, a missed mark because it's not Americana. Like I would have worn that for Americana, not Gilded Age. I wanted right. more. And what the fuck is this? Like who, Who's who that? I don't know. She's on YouTube or something. People are obsessed with her. Emma or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Fashion-y. Why? I have bad fashion. No, you don't. Nope. You're in a gray shirt. I am wearing Crocs. And I like them. <gasps> I'm wearing Crocs with one gibbet. <laughs> Don't listen. That's not my New Year's. What's the gibbet? What is a gibbet? Is that like the little things that go in the holes? Yeah. What is it? it, it my is it Crocs could... by Bravo? <laughs> no, it should be. It's Mazel by Crocs. <laughs> um, no, it just it's it just says kiss. It was okay. given to me by a friend. Are Crocs comfortable? I hate them, but they. I've never felt something so supple. And tender, and it makes me, it makes your heart happy. What size shoe are you? How dare you, 13? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, then you can't fit mine. I'd make you try them on. If I wore Crocs, it would look like I just had buckets on my feet. I look like shit. I don't care. What do you have? 11 and a half. Those are 11? Yeah, mine would be like, mine would look like Ronald McDonald. It doesn't matter. That's the thing. Like, once you put them on, you stop. I would wear Crocs to the Mac Gala. I'm I sure somebody did. I am. Gonna be comfortable for the rest of my life. It's yeah. almost over. Oh, see, I'd wear cozy earth for sure. That's yeah. like my my shit, like my pajama sets. I love the Met them. Gala. I just like I, I it's a I lot. resent it because I have to talk about it on my radio show, yes. and I have to look at these people and act like I give a shit. I don't care what anybody wears. I like it. It's just here's the thing. I didn't get the gay fashion gene. I, I have the gay fashion gene. You look great. Thank you. But like, also, I feel like I love commenting on fashion. I had a show on Eve about it. Yes, you did. And it was like, it was just fun. And now I just feel like people are just dressing up like assholes. And I'm like, do something. Give us something. Did you see the video of Kim getting sewn in? Or they were trying to get it over that ass? And yeah, and she couldn't like walk up the yeah. steps. Uh, she just looked like a like a woman like eaten by a python. Yeah, sucked. Yeah. Well, she'll be whole. fine. She'll be fine. She'll be fine. You know, uh, next up we have uh, Rihanna became a mom. Another Super Bowl person headed toward the Super Bowl. Good for her. Months. I wasn't like, I wasn't like, oh, wow. But I mean, yeah, here we are. Rihanna became a mom. Uh, what's after this? Eh. Oh. This Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial, which was everywhere this year. I did not really care for it. I didn't watch it. I knew she shit the bed. It's annoying. Now she's like dropping her suit a counter suit against him they settled it i know that she sort of settled it i have an amber heard story I, one time i was at a party you wait you have an amber heard story yeah. okay go um met her at a party in new york this is 2010 maybe mm -hmm. 09 10 11 um in new york and i walked into a christmas party and my friend knew her and he was like i was like what is it with this girl like she's everywhere she was getting all these jobs and he's like she's so pretty you can't handle it. I was like, I'll be the judge of that. We walk into this party. <laughs> I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> we walk in and literally she is one of those people where you're like, oh, you are a movie star. You are yeah. that. You look so good. And she just radiates whatever. Um, and I was like, oh, hey, I'm so-and-so's friend. And I said, so, or I, you know what? I'm an idiot. I was like, we're both from Texas. You're from where I'm from. Or Where's she like from? That. She's from literally like right outside Austin. Really? Friday Night Lights. She was on Friday Night Lights. In the movie, Friday Night Lights. Oh, yeah. The movie, not the, the series. Movie. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm from whatever. And she goes. <laughs> Is she from Pflugerville? Round Probably. Rock? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, she, it's a house party, holidays. People are putting, you know, whatever. And she, I was like, oh, hey, I'm from wherever in Texas. And she's like, and she turns to my friend whose house is. She goes, where's my stuff? And she gets her stuff and leaves. So it's to this day, my oh. friend who I was with, we're always just like, if something's like not really landing, it's just like, where's my stuff? <laughs> I love it. Where's my stuff heard? What a bitch. <laughs> I don't think she, I don't think she even meant it to be a bitch. I think she just literally is just kind of like, 
where's my stuff? Like I'm leaving. I don't know. She just was How I just weird. Where's my stuff? She just was one of those people who was um being, Where's my stuff? Where's my stuff? I'm leaving. I'm out I don't of here. Be here. Who's this anymore. faggot from Texas? Just, yeah. <laughs> God, isn't that oh, that's so bizarre? But yeah, this was very played out. Sad. I was very, I mean, there was not a podcast I went on where it's like we did not talk about the. And what's the take to have? Like there is nothing. It's sad. It's just like whatever. Two rich people just being annoying. And people who really who had really bad um, issues that didn't. You know, sometimes you can work through your issues with a partner. They're like, it's sometimes. abuse, but is it? Or I like, didn't like know, that. Like, I don't I'll like figure it out. I don't like people. Um, I don't like any sort of domestic violence. It's really upsetting to me. Yeah. Any sort of hitting, punching, anything. But a Chris Rock slap you can take. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was also another example of the dude having the receipts where she was like, he abused me, he abused me, and then he shows up with all the recordings. Right. Oh, yeah. And that and was awkward to talk about, too, because you didn't want to be like, well, she seems like a cold-ass bitch. Where's my stuff? But then it's like, where's my stuff? Well, <laughs> <laughs> where's my stuff? <laughs> God, but yeah. uh, I think here's where's my stuff right here. Uh, this was a big story. Leah Michelle got to fulfill her childhood fantasy of playing, uh, what's her ass on um, Fanny Bryce. Fanny Bryce in Funny Girl. I, I don't know Funny Girl. I don't either. Don't know I don't it. have the fashion gene and I don't have the Funny Girl gene. I don't have the Broadway gene. That's okay though. Is I it? got you. It's yeah. okay. Okay. I think that's okay because I don't, I've stopped sweating the fact that I don't have fashion sense and like, I got you covered with the Broadway. Here's my question. Yeah. Two things I know about this. I love that the theater that they're in, the show that was in before Funny Girl was Mean Girls. Kind of a cute anecdote. And how appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> and do you think, the update on this, uh, do you think that Lee Michelle had her buckle fat sucked out? <laughs> That's literally this week's news. The internet is alleging that Leah Michelle had her buckle fat sucked out. What does that mean? Okay, buckle fat is this. Oh, yes, she did. Okay. She did. You think? There's pictures. Yeah. It's like it's like yeah. it's like her cheekbones are like right here. <laughs> I thought she said her butthole fat. <laughs> no, that's me. And I was like, wait, is butthole fat a thing now? I'm it like, makes you sing John, better. write it down for next week. We have a butthole fat in 23. Uh, her buckle fat. Yeah, yeah, she did. She had it like it's like it's like chiseled down. I yeah. will yeah, I say yes on this. That's um, the new thing, is buckle fat. Yeah. Chris um, Keegan, Chloe, Leah Michelle. Buckle oh, it's fat. all, they all had it? Yeah. I had never heard of that. Um, however, uh, uh, Beanie Fieldstein, uh, or as I call her, butthole fat, um, <laughs> did leave very early. And Jane Lynch left too. Do you think Jane Lynch left because Leah Michelle? Because I did ask Heather this this year, Heather Morris, on, and I was like, oh. and she was like, well, you know, Jane just knows what she likes. And I'm like, oh, okay. I don't think it was a great experience. I mean, the Glee thing is is pretty dark. But uh, uh also Beanie Feldstein featured in the Nepo Baby article. In a what? In the Nepo Baby article. Oh yeah, from the New Yorker. Yeah. Which kind of needs to stop. I know. We need to stop that. Stop I, Nepo Babies or stop, stop calling Nepo it out. Stop Nepo Babies. Nepo Babies oh, need okay. to like not. I mean, it's not going to stop. But I just I did stop. see that article and it kind of all put into perspective I for like me. I like seeing it. And I was like, oh, when you see it, you're like, yeah, yep. all these fuckers haven't done shit and they're just <laughs> getting handed everything. What is that? Nepo Babies, John. <laughs> it's fam. It's the kids of famous people who are now in like movies and music oh because of uh, jonah it's nepotism babies got it like uh, dakota johnson um maya hawk Uma maya Uma. hawk ethan and uma's daughter but um, then it, it goes back it's forever it's like literally you know jane fonda jamie lee curtis mm -hmm. it's everyone and yeah so it's kind of like it's not that it's wrong to you know to say your dad's on a movie set you learn the ropes whatever yeah. you happen to be talented i think that's fine but it is definitely like Shocking to see that literally everyone had a famous parent. Well, right. And it's just like, you know, look at the Kardashian kids when they get older. Right. I'm sure they're going to have a spinoff series already, like the next generation or whatever. Who's your least favorite Nepo baby? Oh, yeah. Good question. Your least favorite. I have mine. It came to me immediately. Who? Not, oh. Bryce Dallas Howard. I oh. hate her. You hate her? I don't like her. It, <laughs> Jurassic World I don't is bad. I don't like her in anything. <laughs> the help? The the Black Mirror episode? I didn't like her in anything. Oh. Every time I see, I'm like, you don't, Spider-Man 3? Or was it Spider-Man 3? I was like, this is just all bad. This is. Wow. Okay, listen, you're enti everyone, everyone's the, entitled. Everyone's entitled to the, hate their own Nepo baby. That's the fun of collecting yeah. the And Nepo I just baby. found out what a Nepo baby is, and she came to mind immediately. Wait, I want to know who mine is. Who do I hate? I'll just say mine's Beanie. 
Who? Beanie. Beanie Fieldstein. I mean, why? Yeah. You're going to give her a Broadway show yeah. when she can't sing as well as even Shania Twain. Damn. Sorry. Fair enough. But you just said you liked that movie she was in. Uh, the Book other. Smart. Yeah. Okay, everybody gets one freebie. And she was great in the uh, Sarah. <laughs> a freebie for Lucky. Beanie. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to say mine is probably. Who's on the cover of that? Zoe Kravitz. Yeah, Maya I like Hawk. her. Me too. I like Zoe Kravitz. She looks like a Batgirl. Yeah. Um, Maya Hawk, Dakota Johnson, Zoe Kravitz, Beanie. Um, I'm trying to picture the cover. I think Ben Platt was on there. He is on there. And I'm going to say that's mine. Yeah. Just because he, uh, my friend worked on uh, Waving Through Window. What that did your friend do? She was the uh, director's assistant. Oh, my God. Or she actually was a production assistant. That movie is trash. Hilarious. I know. And she worked on it for so long. And I'm so happy for her because she made all these amazing friends. But then, like, the movie came out. And I was like, oh, God. Because you want it to be successful, you know? But then it was like, oh, his dad cast him in two of his movies and then then directed, what is it called? Evan Hansen. And then yeah. did the movie. And he played... The high school kid, and that was a huge. Did that come out this year? It did. I watched it. No. Movie. I watched Do you remember Henson came out this year? I think it came out a year ago yeah, or two fall years ago. Of the other year. I was on a plane in March, and it is a great plane movie. I laughed yeah. so hard. It's a good plane movie. And also, like, he looks like he looked like an old he looked like one of those kids that are like 90, but they're really like 10. <laughs> oh, with the syndrome. With the syndrome. With stiff persons. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> But yeah, I thought, yeah, Ben Platt's mine. I'm just like, really, dude? Come yeah, on. It. And it also says something about, I'm like, you're, you're, you're getting, you got engaged to like th the guy who played the same role as you. It's sick. It's, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, it's Broadway incest. Incest. Yeah. It's sick. It's brothers in love. Ugh, it's mormonboys.com. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Back to your, for your, your page, <laughs> your FYP. <laughs> Uh, it's <laughs> buttholefat.org. <laughs> um, here's the story. Jojo Siwa called out Candace Cameron Bure, which I thought was amazing because Candace Cameron just, I mean, talk about a bitch who just fucking had Christmas blow up in her face, like uh, with her, you know, Christian God Christmas network, whatever. The face of hate. Is she though? <laughs> I don't think she's the face of hate, but she's pretty close. <laughs> Yeah, I think she's probably ignorant. She thinks she's doing what is right in, in, in the world, but it's actually really awful. Yeah. Um, I was not a big Fuller House fan, to be honest. I Team Jody Sweden. Love. Forever. And Kimmy Gimbler. Love. And, and Bob Saget. And Bob Saget, R.I.P. But, like, I love Jojo Siwa standing up and saying, like, no, because there was a big feud saying that there was a trend going around TikTok. That's what happened. And they were like, oh, who's the rudest celebrity you've ever been with? And she was like, well, it was Candace Cameron. And Candace Cameron was like, no, that's no. I, I love the LGBTQ. I hate community. <laughs> <laughs> and then JoJo Siwa became the Grand Marshal at WeHo Pride this year. And I, when I tell you I have not seen a young person gacked out on pixie sticks in a while. What do you mean? Like JHB? You might call it GHB. Oh my God. I called it Jojo Siwa Candy Dust because she was just like, <laughs> it's a lot. So much. It's a lot. It's also lesbian exuberance. When they're, when, a, when you get a joyful lesbian really going, yeah. It's like Captain Marvel, just sheer power. And it's also very rare you get a joyful lesbian. Usually they're just very like at home and quiet, homebodies. They want to tend to themselves. But when you want like an exuberant, like, a dance machine. A dancing lady les. A, a, a teenage lesbian is um, a rare find, and I love it. Like a, a famous pop star teenage lesbian, I love that it exists. God, she's just, I'm just annoying. a teenage <laughs> lesbian, baby. I love a teenage les. Yeah. I Go think I, for it. I kind of was a teenage lesbian in my heart, you know, in high school. Yeah. Maybe we all were. Okay. Well, no. I was a lie. Were you in the closet? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. I didn't even know what the closet was. Oh. Um, All right, you had girlfriends. Sold out. <laughs> oh. All right, keep it going. We got a couple more. Let's see. We've got... Uh, Pete Davidson. Uh, Pete Davidson was all over the damn year. <laughs> all over. All over. Dated everybody. Uh, his big... His big... Um, 
dick. I was going to say his big uh, romance okay. was with Kim Kardashian. They broke it off after whatever, six months or something. And uh, yeah, I thought, I, 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 I listen, I've met Pete a couple times. I get he has childhood trauma. He, do you think he's hot? I don't see it, but I, I know don't see it either. People that know him and work with him and love him, yeah. and they get it. And so I believe that in person, maybe there's something to get, but I don't get it from here. To me, he reminds me of like, do you remember the lead in the movie Powder? <laughs> I love Powder. I heard that Powder was problematic recently. Was it? Someone was like, oh, and don't get me started on like, can you believe that movie exists? But like, I cried in Powder in high school. I'm sorry. Was it was it because his mom got struck by lightning and <laughs> she was pregnant? They're like, we need to normalize that um, pregnant women get struck by lightning and it's a real thing. It was offensive to the lightning community. Oh, my God. But yeah, he looks like that. He looks like an albino, like, nutcracker to me. I don't like teeth that big. He has big teeth, too. Are those his real teeth? Who's to say? But is it his real penis? I mean, the world was... Dick, bu it was buckle fat. Butthole fat. <laughs> it, was, it was... Honestly, it was like the world was stigmatized by Pete Davidson. And that's, I think, what it was because everyone was horny. We live in an OnlyFans age. Uh, we live in our uh, algorithm. Like, yeah. we see it. We all, like, we have normalized bulges and... Dick Being everywhere. naked. I mean, my God, we had we had butt cleavage was a fad this year. Butt cleavage. Butt cleavage. Like plumber crack. Yeah, there's a keyhole in dresses that where women are wearing, and it's just the top of their butt cracks being shown. <laughs> Swear to God, you're the fashion expert. I mean, my God, Thank you're you. just like, well, here we are. Um, so yeah, uh, he he digmatized everybody. I think uh, even before the Queen died, R.A.P. People were like, well, they broke up. He's going to move on to Queen Elizabeth now. Right. And who knows? Maybe he did. Maybe he did. Maybe she died. Maybe she got fucked to death. Right. I don't know. Okay. Anyways. Uh, I don't know. I feel... Will Kim... Uh, she seems to survive all of these things. She survived Kanye West. Like, I don't know. What? I don't know. I just think that like... About him? No, we just keep giving her... Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I've been like a, a fan of Kim K for so long. Still am. I think she's great and really smart. And I've always enjoyed her when she's come on the show. I think she's running out of gas. Some like too much. It's too much. Like she just posted some picture Ripping today dresses. where she's on her on her like a trash can taking a picture of her ass. I'm like, girl, can we just have one fucking day off? Yeah, like, be a please. lawyer or not. Yeah, be a lawyer or not. Dress appropriately for a Christmas party. Don't show up like Avril Lavigne in 2003. And like, like, get it together. By like, the way, yeah, seriously. And Avril like, Lavigne came back this year, which I was excited about. She did come back this year, and I'm very excited about that. Yeah. I was very excited. I'm ready for an Avril Lavigne assance. Um, <laughs> I'm not excited for Adam Lavigne, however, who sh who shit on his whatever happened with this. That's top three stories for me. What Adam Lavigne? Adam Lavigne and. This his DMs, chick? his DM chaos, Sumner yeah. Stro. But just the way he approached the, the things he was sending the women in the DMs, and then that became a trend on social media. Everybody started uh, photoshopping their own DMs from Adam Levine. Mm -hmm. That was one of my favorites. He stories. was so thirsty and so horny, and every guy is. Yeah, fine. Um, but I mean, I, I mean, he he was never not a douche to me. Mm -hmm. You know. So. But here's the thing what I think women need to do, and I'm going to give women advice, and I'm going to give them the opportunity to actually seize power, because I know what men do. Yeah. You know what men do in DMs. They take unsolicited dick pics and send them to you. Now, when a said Adam Levine- Do you get a lot of dick pics? Um, I get like a few. Oh my God, I love that. Do you? I stop checking. How do you stop checking? I just stop checking. If it says photo, you stop checking? Uh, I stopped opening. I can sometimes I look in the like request folder because yeah. they don't see if you've seen it. Yeah, but um, I don't I don't open uh, the general DMs. Mine I don't want to engage. I'm scared of people. Well, I get scared too because I'm just like, what are you What are you sending me? But also, it's like sometimes they'll send me like a story, like, oh, you got to look at this, but yeah. I don't follow them, and it'll say what's blurred to like because right. you don't follow them. So then I'll check and I'll be like, oh god. But I do like seeing the dicks I have seen. I like getting them. Good for you. But I don't. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a it's it's a lot. I, but I then I usually get an apology the next day. They're like, I'm so sorry I was drunk. And you're like, oh no, God, now I'm just some like afterthought. <laughs> <laughs> 
But uh, I do think, like, women, like, if Adam Levine's sexting you, screenshot oh, that yeah. and send it out. Oh, bitch, We yes. all want to see it. Yes. All of us. That is, I know, like, listen, I have sent some disgusting DMs to people. I'll uh-huh. admit it. Um, but I have always thought, you know, if this gets broadcast to anyone and publicized in any way, not that anyone gives a fuck about my right. DMs. Um, I'm okay with it. Yeah, but I'm saying like an Adam <laughs> I'm Levine. I'm not cheating on anyone, and I'm not lying. Right, as long as you're like on, you're like having fun or whatever. Like that's totally fine. But it's like, but when you're like, I want to name my daughter after oh. you. Like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? And a bad name too. It's not a even dumb name. Yeah, it's like what? Are, like creep, gross. Ugh. At it, least Army Hammer had the good sense to bring eat? Oh. culinary <laughs> skills into it. God, it's so bizarre. Filthy. It's a win for the two. I'm in LA too, and I was, and everybody, he's like everybody, every girl's dream. So whenever this happens to like Adam Levine, is every girl's dream. Every girl I talk to is like, oh my, my ideal guy is Adam Levine, and, and oh and like, no god, straight people. As an LA two, I'm just sort What's of what's an like, LA two? Like I was in New York five, and then I moved here, and I'm in LA two. Oh, too. oh my god. So uh, yeah, John that, has great self esteem. I do, and that's a win for us. <laughs> that's that's a, that, yeah, that's a win for us on uh, on the low side. I don't think he's hot. I think if I saw him, I'd be like, yeah, all right. Uh, not doing it for not me. Not doing it for me either. I mean, my God. My stuff? Someone said that, it, what did someone say? They compared his tattoos on his body to like a menu, like some, <laughs> like, yes. like, <laughs> like a Jerry's Deli. It was like a Jerry's Deli, yeah. like one of those, yeah, like a Quiznos, like deli map. Yeah. Like you have California on your stomach. Relax. Okay. Also a Nepo baby, I think. Levine? I think. I think. Adam Levine is a Nepo baby? I think so. I'll look into that. Okay, we got to find out. Okay. All right. We got time for a couple more. Oh. Oh, sperm for days. Who? Oh, Nick Cannon. (laughs) Sperm for days. I was like, I saw this. I was like, what? Sperm for days. Uh, I mean, we had Nick Cannon having 9 million children, which enough. Enough. Did I tell you the story, the theory? Did I say that on this podcast where how Nick Cannon? I did. I did say that this year. Uh, someone brought it to Heather McDonald's attention that like he has a kidney uh, disorder and you're only allowed three kidney transplants in your life. So that's why he's having all these kids to... You owe me. Wow. Harvesting children. Ew. But ew. Smart. Maybe smart. <laughs> but ew. But yeah. Sick. People sick. are sick and nasty. Hollywood trash. Yes. It's garbage. He's, ha- he's raising a farm. Raising a full on farm. A kidney farm. Uh, mm, hustle. Yeah, but whatever, Nick Cannon. Here's to 20 more. Um, we had Beyonce and Taylor Swift come out with their newest albums and everyone lost their damn mind. I'm I'm getting annoyed at this point. And I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> I need a visual album from Beyonce. I'm tired of asking for it. Mm-hmm. I have spent nights awake yelling at my ceiling to give it to us. Taylor Swift has already like released all of the music, all of the videos, and um, managed to somehow get in my uh, year-end Spotify rap. Uh huh. Which I don't listen to Taylor Swift, and I think I just had it on, and like one of her like deep cuts got in there somehow, and they're like, "Up, oh, do you like her now?" Yeah. And I... she knows. She knows she's the problem. It's her. <laughs> it's her. I like that. It's true. Hi. Yeah. But what did you think of Beyonce's uh, disco album? One uh, of my favorite albums, like definitely one of my favorite Beyonce albums of all time. Yeah, it was good. Loved it. Yeah. It was perfectly timed. It was a great summer album. What well, was Pride? My God. Yeah. She was like, I love the gays and this is for my gay uncle. And we were like, you want but my soul. Uh, yes. Giving us Robin S. Giving yes. us like, uh, she collaborated with Madonna and redid Vogue and like yeah. all the women or like African American. You're like, ah, uh, ha, ha. It was inspiring and also yeah. something you can always have on. I am obsessed. Yeah. And uh, then Taylor Swift brought out like a <sighs> missing kid on a milk carton song or whatever the hell. I don't even know. <laughs> uh, right. I mean, she literally, listen, gr- good for Taylor Swift. Mm-hmm. I, this, I don't like a lyric about petting a cat. It's just not my vibe. I don't like a lyric about a sexy baby. I don't either. But I like one about a Nepo baby writing that dick all night like Beyonce says. Absolutely. <laughs> Surfboard. Yeah. Surfboard. I don't need petting a cat, but yeah, fine. 
Call you old fashioned. She's the problem with her. Yeah, you're right. Call me old fashioned. Yeah. I also like Carly Rae Jepsen's album that came out the same day as Taylor's. Who? Carly Rae Jepsen. Oh, yes. That was good. I think I listened to that on your show. Uh, That was really fun. I love Carly Rae. I think Carly Rae is going to have a moment next year. Yeah, for sure. You know who's going to have a moment next year? Caroline Palachek. Mark my words. Oh. Love her. Just got my tickets for April. (gasps) Oh. April 26th? I'm going to. I'm oh. going to go. Oh, I love her. She opened for so Dua Lipa. Good. She's everything. She's Caroline everything. Palachek. She sounds like a salty mermaid lost at sea. Mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah, she sounds like Tori Amos being strangled. She's like a like like a, a way. Yeah, she looks like she was locked in a lighthouse. Yes. And like only wayward fishermen can hear her song. And the only way to get her out of the lighthouse is to do a modern interpretive dance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. And you're like, who was that? Why, that was the Caroline Palachek. Yeah, that's yeah. Oh, so good. And the worst name for a pop star. Worst name for a pop star, but I'm here. Brilliant. If we can have a Bjork, we can have a Caroline Palachek. Yeah, when I went to her show last summer, uh, I noticed like there were all these like straight Gen Z guys like really going hard for Caroline Palachek. And I was like, oh, this is the new generation of this is what you Gays? guys like. No, they were straight. Like it's like I you know. and I were straight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, they could you be were. like, yeah, I'm just throwing out to this, like crying. this Enya woman. <laughs> the emo-ness of the generation I love it. is obsessive. I'm going to skip these next two just because they're boring. Kanye West and Elon Musk. I just don't care. I am muting them officially. I've unsubscribed from... The, I mean, they're just both douchebags, and I'm over it. Now, my queen of the year is a toss-up. Mm. Julia Fox, Uncut Gems. I was gonna say the one thing we got from Kanye was yes, was Julia Fox. Julia, Renata. I'll give her, I'll give you that. Julia Fox, Uncut Gems, this weird. She just came up out of nowhere. We're obsessed. I think she is just this weird. Love it. Icon. We say icon a lot. Oh, I say full icon. You say full icon, Julia Fox. Sure. Okay, I say full icon. Anna, inventing Anna, Anna Delvey. She is an icon. She is the moment. She is free from house arrest. She does not have time for you, but she does have time to do podcasts. Um, I'm trying to get her to do mine. Oh, she should. I would love, I mean, my God, I would just lose it if Anna Delvey just walked in here. I'd, I'd dress like her. I would. I would be that person. She I'm pretty gym? sure there's, she is. A, there's a reason Whitney had to go to New York for it. Oh, I didn't uh, mention names, uh, John. I mean, I I didn't say anything bad. I'm just saying, like, I don't think Anna can leave the state. <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. Yeah, she's yeah, she yeah, she's you probably go to New York. I should. I need to get out there. I and, and maybe 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 I'll just go out there. I'll I might do a show, but I might just want to hang out with Anna Delvey. Find her. Take pictures of her on her like fire uh, escape. Oh uh, God, she was everything from the uh, the miniseries, which was amazing. Uh, there's a documentary that's really great too on Generation <clears throat> Hustle, I believe. On HBO sure. Max, there's an episode of that devoted to her. It's brilliant. Ah, it's, it's the real people she scammed, which is like it is the American dream. I mean, she scammed the system. I mean, it's what's his name uh, from Firefest? Like she knew him. Yeah. You know, it's like she's she's just I I don't know. It's so weird to me. I thought it was so. Fascinating that like Shonda Rhimes was like, I'm just gonna like put this out out here, and like yeah. everyone ate it up. And I love Anna Klumsky. Yeah. Oh, love. my girl. Yes. She's back. Um. Okay, we've got time for a couple more. Uh, Stranger Things. Camera. That big butt. Beyonce. She oh, died. the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> the Queen died. Yes, that was. Sad. Um, it was going to happen. Was it? <laughs> she lived forever. She, it is weird. I feel like, like especially like being alive and knowing only one queen ever. It was a moment. It was a moment. Some people say it was uh, COVID related. I don't think it was. Foul play. I want it to be foul play. Pete Davidson dicked her down to death. I think he dicked her down to death. And then I, I also think Charles like went into her room with a pillow. I think it's Charo. Charo should have <laughs> got into her room. I think Charles like put a pillow over her and was like, uh-huh. mommy, I want to be queen <laughs> or king, whatever. Same thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, that you was know, sad. The queen was an animal hoarder. She had a lot of corgis. They said like, we're not going to have any more. And then she like relapsed on corgis. <laughs> She had like four more, just four for the road. <laughs> Relapse on corgis. She did. Uh, 
Okay, so the queen died. Oh, this was a moment. Who I love this that? one. That's Emma D'Arcy from Game of Thrones, House of the Dragon. Oh, one of the best shows all year. I didn't watch. I can't. Oh. I have to work my way up to it. Oh, it's so wonderful. I loved it so much, but she had a viral video with her co-host. Co-host. <laughs> from Radio Andy. I didn't watch because it was, it seemed, I will watch. She was with uh, her her uh, co-star oh, of House of the Dragon. They were doing those like HBO Max like interviews at the end. And this went viral where she's okay, she's a lesbian. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. And she's awesome. And Jojo she was, C was available if she's single. That's true. Okay. Oh. Okay. Jojo Siwa could play her as a young version. Hot. I would love to see Jojo Siwa on the back of a dragon. Me too. Or do I? Mm. Probably not. The dragon would <laughs> she'd go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> She'd, she'd Targaryen the shit out of that. Um, but she's interviewing uh, uh, Emma Darcy, and she's like, what's your drink of choice? A Negroni, Spagliato, with a splash of Prosecco. And every straight woman in the world slid out of their chair. Is that what happened? Is that why Negronis had such a moment? They still are, year? yeah. Wow. There were bars in L.A. that were like, we're not serving that. Or like people like are going to gay bars and getting this drink. Negroni sales, I guarantee you, went up. You know who loves a Negroni? Who? Rachel Maddow, another lesbian. It's a very sapphic drink. I don't even know what a Negroni is. I don't either, but I know that lesbians love them. Isn't it that weird, like, orange drink? Aperol. Aperol. Is that a Negroni? It's in a Negroni, right? Oh. Aperol, sp an Aperol spritz. Yeah, an Aperol spritz. I don't like the taste of it. Don't Bitter? Like it. Oh, yeah, here it is. Negroni. It's Italian. Oh, it was in White Lotus. Which was another iconic moment. We had Jennifer Coolidge fall off a boat. Um, gin, vermouth, and Campari. Oh, I'm lying. Okay. So they, what's Spagliato then? Butthole fat. It's butthole fat. <laughs> Spagliato with a splash of Prosecco. So yes, that went viral. They made a dance out of it, all that stuff. Heidi okay. Klum is a worm for Halloween. Was it too far? No. It was disgusting. It's, it's sick. I mean, it's Halloween. It should be. But I think it's so messed up. <laughs> She's so beautiful. And it's so, like, insane mm -hmm. that, that that's... I, I think it's really amazing that she did that. It is pretty cool. I think... And then she took it off and, like, was dancing with just the face on. I mean, it was it was really weird. And it got people talking because it was just like, bleh, it's so gross. It's so it's weird. It's so gross and weird. And all I the loved discussions it. of all the costumes, just like a worm. It's simple. It's A disgusting. worm. An earthworm. Yeah. Just a large earthworm come to life and with the face. facial expression. She couldn't breathe in there. She definitely was claustrophobic. And I love a queen of Halloween. You know what? If Mariah can have fucking Christmas, Heidi, you got Halloween. Yeah. Oh, God, Mariah. What um, were you and, for Halloween? Huh? What were you for Halloween? Um, I was a, what, what did I do? Nothing. Okay. I love that. Next term doing something. I got to get back in. Okay. I just gave up. Yeah. We took a few years off. Yeah. I need to get my Halloween spirit back. Um, and finally, wait, what's the last story we have? Oh, we have Kendall Jenner with the cucumber. That was love. pretty viral. Yes. She didn't know how to cut a cucumber. And that was like, How? And she had it like with her hand up and then like didn't know how to cut it. Was there anything else that stood out for you as far um, as pop culture? Like let me look at my little list. Yeah, here. take a list. We'll take it. We'll take like uh, a here's my little list. Lou Andela Steps saying, I hope you keep serving cunt on cameo. Did you see that? No. Okay, we'll find that for you. Okay. Uh Aubrey O'Day visiting Fiji from her living room. Aubrey O'Day's travel pics were everything. And do you know that I reached out? To Aubrey O'Day. Did you? To come on to this podcast. And she was like, I totally will. And then never did. And I'm like, wow, she really Aubrey O'Day? Taking a trip to Shanghai from her back. It was <laughs> stunning. <laughs> and then she went on a television show and she was just like, it's art. And you're like, mm. let's Photoshop her into the studio. Yes. On brand for her. That would be my New Year's dream. Uh, uh, monkey pox. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can we acknowledge that nobody's top 20 list included anything science related? And there was a lot. A oh, lot yeah. of science. Um, What's that thing? Oh, nuclear fusion. You know about that? 
where we can now have like reusable energy, they how they learned how to do it. Yeah, they learned how to do it. They learned how to do it, you guys. <laughs> Nuclear fusion is like so in right now. It's different from fission. But also we have that telescope that like saw everything. That yeah, shit. let's do other like breakthroughs. Okay, yes, thank you. And Nick Carter died. <laughs> Aaron Carter died, honey. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, Nick Carter's career just died. Thank you. Ah, uh, oh, show me the meaning. And of I guess like, there was a crack in our magnetosphere this morning, and there was an earthquake in San Francisco. What else? Oh, did your mom text you and was like, oh, my God, did you feel the earthquake? No, she texted me something else. Oh. Um. <laughs> <laughs> my mom was like, did you feel the earthquake? I was like, I don't live in Northern California, mom. What else? Eight billion people. Eight. Oh, we reached. Oh, eight we did billion reach eight billion people. people. What a fun year ish. Right, it's crowded in here. Yeah. What else happened? That's why uh, the queen got out. Everyone died. Everyone died. The it's corn kid. Corn <laughs> kid was massive. I think it's my favorite song of the year. Is it's corn? It's oh really? Do you? Uh, let me try to think of a song of the year. <laughs> yeah, I think of one. It's corn was literally on my Spotify Wrapped. Really? Oh, oh no. I was embarrassed. That's why I didn't post it. Everyone was like, look at my hot Spotify rap. Like, mine's It's Corn. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you That's why you hang out with the old mayor. Oh, my God. The- John's with the old mayor, Eric Garcetti. Wait, what was my song? Oh, my song of the year was... Um, it's Corn. No, I think mine was uh, that I listened to. Um, it was either like Purple Disco Machine. Oh, no, it was a song by... Um, it was uh uh think of it. It was not like, ringing any bells. I know. I can't think of it now. Mine was all Muna. Luna. Muna. Muna. Yeah. If you're into Caroline Polachek, you have to be into Muna. Well, I, I, now Muna. I know Muna. I probably do. I just don't know the name yeah. of it. Lesbian. But um, Lesbian. follow me. It was called Follow Me. Follow Me. Follow Me. Follow Me. Uh, yeah. What? It was like. It's just this. It's like a. It's like a. It's like a transgender woman from like Brazil or something. And I did the podcast with Johnny Sibley this year, and I was like, this is going to be the summer song. Yes. And I don't think it really was, but it was my summer song and my number one song on Spotify this year. So it's awesome. Born. All right. Well, I think that was good. That Anything was good. else? No, let's leave this year in the fucking dust. Yeah, bye. Get out of here. Yeah. John, where can everyone find you? Oh, John Arthur Hill on Instagram. I'm not on Twitter. Oh. Um, sorry, Elon. <laughs> not sorry. Uh, listen to, ooh, uh, Radio Andy, channel, yeah. Sirius XM Channel 102, Andy Cohen Live in the Mornings, my show, The News with John Hill. Get a Wondery Plus subscription. Listen to my scripted podcast called Naughty. Technically holidays, but yeah. go do it anyway. Yeah. Um, and send me dick pics. Do it. I mean, my God, please. It's a new year, new dick. I mean, if that's any <laughs> new year, new dick. I remember get your butthole fat uh, lasered or removed. Or, yeah, I might need to get butthole fat put in. <gasps> BBLs. Yeah. Big butthole. Butt BBHL. HLs. You got it. We're starting to trend. Yeah. Happy New Year, everybody. We hope you guys have a great New Year's Eve. Please stay safe and uh, let's like. Get it together in the new year. Get your life to sort your life out. Figure it out. Be nicer. All right. We'll see you next time on Just Say with Justin Martindale. Bye.